An intraoperative meiosis can prove to be a significant challenge for the operating surgeon during phaco emulsification. Let's look how, in this particular case, we successfully managed to remove both the epineucleus and the cortex in this patient whose pupil went down to 3 mm at the end of nucleus management. Let's now move to watching this part of the surgery. Following the completion of nucleus management, viscoelastic is introduced into the anterior chamber and then we proceed with the bimanual irrigation aspiration. Being a left-handed surgeon, I introduce the irrigation held in my non-dominant right hand and the aspiration in my dominant left hand. In this case, I have retained epineucleus and cortex. In order to attain some amount of visibility, note how the irrigation works as a retractor, pulls the iris away towards the angle, thereby giving me a little more visibility and thereby enabling me to remove the epineucleus and the cortex safely. Note how I keep moving the irrigation cannula superiorly and inferiorly to retract the iris in the area where I want to actually remove the cortex and the epineucleus. Here you will note that I've got quite a thick and a firm plate of epineucleus which makes it slightly difficult. So it's about holding on to one part of the epineucleus towards the equator which as you can see we've managed here which then makes it easier to draw it out. Once any part of this bowl is drawn in, its subsequent removal becomes a lot easier. In order to bring the rest of the epineucleus out, note how I introduce the irrigation under the epineucleus sheet and elevate the irrigation probe, thereby elevating the epineucleus out into the AC after which it is aspirated. You can now watch the rest of the epineucleus which has now been downsized and freed being aspirated. So therefore, for the removal of the epineucleus in a patient with a small pupil, aid your visibility by using the irrigation to retract the iris, try and draw out the epineucleus by grasping it at the equator where it's the thickest, breaking down the bowl, after which it can then be aspirated. We now proceed with the removal of the cortex. The principles of cortical wash in a small pupil are quite the same as that of the epineucleus. Once one half the cortex is removed, the irrigation and the aspiration cannulas are swapped over prior to which viscoelastic is reintroduced into the eye. Let's now watch the rest of the cortex wash. Watch how the irrigation held in the left hand draws the pupil outwards, thereby enhancing visibility and aiding the ease of removal of the cortex. In this manner, with care and caution, and ensuring that at all times you have very good visibility and ensuring at all times you're working with a good illumination, a fairly high magnification and perfect focus, you're going to be able to successfully remove the epineucleus in the cortex despite having a small pupil. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you.